Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Just a quick introduction to this video. So during the Christmas holidays, I decided to run a one-to-one -one sessions giveaway on my Instagram for those people living in, in countries where because of their currency would have been hard to afford a one-to-one -one session with me, but basically a one-to-one -one session with everybody teaching from Europe because there is a big difference in the prices. And, um, and so, Central and South America, Africa, Middle East or East Europe, those countries. And um, it was just uh, for five spots, but then I had eight requests and I decided to take them all. So we did at the end eight one hour one to one sessions. All I asked them was to allow me to share an edit of the session on YouTube if the session was helpful also for other people. So in this first video, uh, we have Florin. Florin is from from Romania from Bucharest Romania um, he has this uh, nice uh, breakbeats style track just one more thing he works in Fruity Loops so uh, basically I couldn't work directly on his project but he shared his screen and I was just telling him what he could have done um, okay so let's get it started oh now I can see you Welcome and nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Uh, I'm from Bucharest. For this track, for example, I'll give you a little bit of background. Um, as I told you, I'm working with a friend of mine. Yes. So we're both uh, into this. But with this track, for example, is the same thing that I that I had since I started. I always feel like I get to a point where I don't know what to do more. Like mm -hmm. I know the track needs some more diversity into it. But mm. I don't know exactly how to take it and when to start with it. I think here the main quote marks uh, problem is the synth that you have for all the time of the track. I think you you made it like it, it's a baseline, right? It's a little bit okay. the, the baseline of the track, but it's not really a baseline because it's too high with its pitch. And it's something that you have always going on from start to finish of the track. That's what makes the track a little bit boring because you have all, all the time this thing, which is not a baseline. So it's not something that you feel like uh, it's putting those low frequencies that makes you move. And, it, okay. and it's more like a synth sound, speaking in terms of frequencies, not in terms of how it plays. And just in terms yes. of frequencies, if we, if we look at the spectrum, I'm pretty sure this is not going on the 40 hertz or the 30 or the 50 it's, it's upper it's a little bit uh, upper in the frequency range i would use in a more careful way i'd say so from time to time but i would build a stronger baseline based on the lower frequencies of of um, of the spectrum that makes okay. the track feels bigger on top of this you have you're using a kick sound that is still not a, a subby kick. It's more of a sort of 909 type of kick, uh, but with a few low frequencies. And so this one as well doesn't give to the track that deep feeling of a strong uh, low to low frequency content, okay? So that's the first right. thing that I would um, try to change because everything else, you have a, a good arrangement, you have a lot of eff effects uh, coming in and out. So that's absolutely not what is making the track feeling incomplete. I would try to listen to a sharp part of the track without that synth and see everything else, how, how it sounds, and then try to think what, what I've, I would like to hear instead of that one. Can we try? Uh, instead of the the one that uh, yeah uh, exactly I okay. think it's the sure. track one. Okay, so here I would 
I would try to to put a low, uh, a sub base or something like that. Then, if you want, I can try to look in the packs. Okay. And find something that best suits the the style. That that could be nice. The first this one you one. played. This one. You could try this. Yes. The only thing I would do differently is that I I would leave a little bit of release time, so it's not cut after immediately after you release the key from your keyboard. Okay, you have a little All bit right. of, of a tail on the sound, like this. Yeah. So here is the. Um... Okay, take it down one octave. Yeah, and now try to go, go to D sharp because that's the scale, the root note of our track. Okay. Great. Now I, we only need the line. To build the line, yeah. This is the most <laughs> hard part for me. Yeah, I know. Uh, for everyone, I think. Uh, Let's try to just, switch that off. Yeah. Got it. Uh, You can try to go also higher than these two notes with with one note, for example, the last one, just to you know add some higher frequency content in the bass line. Uh, let's try with G sharp. Okay. Okay. I will keep the the la that one where it is. So we, we differentiate okay. the first loop from the second, okay? Uh, that's always okay. nice. Maybe you can invert the two things. The first one, you, you go down on the first two measures. So the G sharp, you take it down where it was before. And on the last one, okay. you go up to that G sharp that you played. With the same note or like... Mm, you can this try one? with the last with the last note. Or let's try both options. I don't know uh, okay. until we don't hear it. Okay, that's not bad. Now that we have a bass, of course you can keep working on this, making it better, improving until it sounds perfect for you. But what we could do now, we could use this bass line and create the two different ones. The first one that you use at the beginning of the track where you just play the root note and maybe with less note, you just play the note from time to time. So, dum, 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 okay. something like that. And then, Later in the in the arrangement, you can start maybe on the first drop. You can start or in the break before the first drop. You introduce the complete bass line, so where you move the notes up and down, and that could be already a way to create two options uh, to manage them on the arrangement. So having two types, one that you can use in the intro, one that you can use in the real drop adds more energy, adds a, a surprise to the listener, so it makes the track more, more interesting. Okay, can we try this bass line a little bit later in the track where, where there are more elements so that I can hear it in the, uh, yeah. the, in the main yeah. part of the track? Is this where the party's at? But I think the effects need to be a little bit brought down or maybe just spread more on the yeah. Over the track. Yeah, the effect you have probably is just a matter of volume. Some of them, the for example, the sweep you have at the beginning of the drop, I think is a little bit too loud. So maybe just fixing the volumes uh, could be nice. Also consider not adding too many of them uh, and too many different of them. Try to dose a little bit better those effects so they don't uh, become too too regular in the track okay because if you if they are too much too regular you start not noticing them anymore and so they lose their their purpose now if we want to take a quick look at um how that uh, synth uh track one feels with the bass line as you can see they can't live together, okay? Yeah. We yeah. need to try to at least filter it with a high pass filter and see if it it if it can fix that. All right. And the 
we are living better now together. Yeah. We could try to push a little bit, a little bit upper the cut frequency. Maybe like this. Mm -hmm. We're losing a little bit of the power of the synth. Yeah, um, that's what I was thinking about. Mm -hmm. You know, at a certain point, you had to evaluate if you if you really want to keep this synth or if it's better to to do another line. To just leave it. Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe do a similar thing, but one octave higher, higher. So taking another synth or a pad or something like that and trying something different because I still feel that this is very um, repetitive in the track, a synth, a synth like this. And I'm afraid it, it, it's, it would, you know, make the track still not, not so perfect. And so maybe a pod, a different pod, more dreamy, you know, higher in frequency could be a better option. Perfect. You know, indeed, indeed. I'm not the type of person that's like, no, I got this and I really want to use it. Um, okay. I think after a point, um, it doesn't matter like the individual elements. It's just the whole that needs exactly. to sound exactly. as it should. I think that there's always need to uh, to have a separation between your lower frequency and your higher frequencies. So if you have that synth, which is halfway in between. It's it's of course going to clash uh, with your with your baseline or with other elements. Also because it's very long. If it, if it was like a few notes, very short notes, you could yeah. have fit it in between the baseline notes, and that could be something that would have added um, rhythm to the track. Okay, that that could be a, have been nice. In this case, it's too long, too present in the track, and the frequency range that you picked for that is not going to work with your bass line. That's the point. Okay. It makes a lot of sense. I I have a lot of things in my head, but usually I can just explain them to me out loud because I don't know <laughs> the terms and exactly how to put it, but it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> if you want, you could try to do that with that sound. You could try to splice as we tried at the beginning to cut in slices and use them as a one-shot sample. I think it's, uh, it will just collide with the, with the bass or either with the kick or something. You cut a little part and you put it in between. Uh, that's what I mean. So in between the kick and yeah, the bass? Yes, yeah. so if you find uh, spots where you don't have any sound, you put it there. Like this, maybe? For example, there, okay? You have, but I think it's too soon here. Mm -hmm. Maybe. That was actually pretty nice. Okay, let's try to check everything together. One sec. That, that will work, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So you okay. can hear how he adds rhythm to the track, having yeah, that definitely. sound that, that falls in the right point of, of the beat. Cool, Florian. So it was nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. It was my pleasure to, to talk with the guy that I look up. I watch on YouTube so much. <laughs> Thank you, Happy my holidays. pleasure. Bye bye. Thank Take you. care, man. Bye bye. Cheers.